for this video, you are going to learn about what is a verb. So reviewers, I want you to prepare your notes for we will go on a roller coaster ride of topics about the verb. So we will discuss the several different types of verbs. Okay, so let's start first with what is a verb. So a verb is the action word in a sentence that describe what the subject is doing. Verbs are doing words, meaning they signify the part of the sentence which explains the action taking place. So reviewers always remember that a verb is an action word, meaning action is gawa or kilos ng isang bagay o ng isang tao. An example of a verb in the sentence are seen on our screen. We have for the first one, he ran away. Next, she eats oatmeal cereals on Sundays and the horses gallop across the fields. So notice that the bold words on your screen are the verbs in that particular sentence. Okay, so moving on. However, not all verbs are easily identifiable as action. These are non-action verbs or those that describe a state of being, emotion, possession, sense, or opinion. Examples of these are, I know your name. He feels happy seeing her. I love how she sings. Okay, so now, how do we recognize a verb? So one clue to help you recognize a verb is its location or ang kinalalagyan ng verb compared to the subject. Verbs almost always come after a noun or pronoun. So ang ibig sabihin nito ay makikita natin ang verb o ang pandiwa maaring nasa unahan ito ng kanyang subject o ng noun pero mas madalas na nasa hulihan o katapos ng ating noun or ng ating subject. So these nouns and pronouns are referred to as the subject. Some examples for this. Mark eats his dinner quickly. Mark is the noun or the subject and then afterwards is the verb which, it, which is eats. Next, you write neatly in your notebook. You is the subject. And then after it was the verb write. Next is we have they thought about all the prizes in the, in the competition. Meaning they is the subject and thought is the verb. Okay, so we are seeing several boxes on the screen. What could be are these boxes? They are types of verbs. We have action verbs. Transitive verbs, intransitive verbs, linking verbs, auxiliary verbs, stative verbs, and modal verbs. So we will discuss this one by one. So reviewers, I want you to take down notes for this. Okay, so what do you see on the screen? It's a person dancing. This is called action verbs. So action verbs express is specific actions and are used anytime you want to show action or discuss someone doing something. It's important to remember that the action does not have to be physical. So, ang ibig sabihin nito reviewers is that action verbs are the specific actions that someone or something is doing. So, it's that it says here also that it does not have to be Physical. So, ibig sabihin, we can have um, the examples like we have on the screen. Jump is a specific action. And also, think and listen is a specific action. Think and listen does not have to be physical, but it's still considered as an action verb. So, action verbs are classified as either transitive or intransitive. What could be this transitive or intransitive type of verbs? So, we have it. Transitive verbs are 
action words that always express doable activities, meaning maaari siyang gawin, that relate or affect someone or something else. In a sentence with a transitive verb, someone or something receives the action of the verb. So, ibig sabihin, transitive verbs are the actions that are being received. So, examples of this are love, respect, tolerate, believe, and maintain. So, let us notice and remember that transitive verbs could also be non-active verbs. So, there are also transitive verbs that uses both direct and indirect object. All right, so we have an example here. It says here, Gary ate the cookies. So the transitive verb is ate. Okay, so ate kasi kinain meaning yun yung kilos o gawa ng tao. Gary is the subject because it is Gary who is doing the eating. And then the cookies are the direct object because it is the cookies that are being Eaten. So, ang ibig sabihin ng direct object ay yun yung, um, yun yung noun or yun yung subject or yung object na ating isinasagawa ang ating kilos. We also have another example. Mary baked her mother a pie. So, the transitive verb is baked. So, yun yung verb, baked. Then, Mary is the subject kasi siya yung nagbibake. The pie is the direct object kasi yung bake yung ginawa, yun yung binake. And then her mother is the indirect object, meaning yun yung inilalaanan mo ng iyong gawa or kilo. Okay, we have then another here, intransitive verbs. So what could be intransitive verbs? Intransitive verbs are action words that always express doable activity. So, kagaya ng transitive verb, magkapareho sila ng doable activities, meaning maaari siyang gawin. Ano nga bang pinagkaiba nila? So, they are different from transitive verbs because there is no direct object following an intransitive verb. So, walang pinaglalaanan ng kilos. Examples of intransitive verbs are walk, laugh, cough, play, and run. So some verbs can be both transitive and intransitive. These verbs include start, leave, change, leave, and stop. Okay, so here is an example for intransitive verb. We traveled to London. The intransitive verb is traveled. The subject is we because we are doing the traveling. Meaning, ang direct object dito or yung subject dito ay ang we. Kasi siya yung gumagawa ng traveling. Sila yung nagta-travels. And London is not a direct object because London is not receiving the action of the verb. So always remember na ang direct object ay yun yung tumatanggap o ginagawan ng kilos, pinaglalaanan ng kilos. Another example, John eats before leaving for school. The verb eats can be both transitive and intransitive depending on whether there is a direct object or not. If the sentence read, John eats the cookies before leaving for school, eats would be transitive as there is a Direct object, the cookies. Okay, next, we have linking verbs. So, what could be linking verbs? A linking verb connects the subject with a verb that gives information about the subject, such as a condition or relationship. So, always remember, reviewers, that linking verbs also means Connecting verbs or those that connects the subject for and its verb. So they do not show any action. They simply link the subject with the rest of the sentence. The most common linking verbs are am, um, is, are, was, were, being, and been. So examples of this, we have I am going to Paris next month. William is excited about his promotion. They are a problem.
Okay. Next is we have auxiliary verbs. What do we mean by auxiliary verbs? So auxiliary verbs are also known as helping verbs and are used together with a main verb to show the verb's tense or to form a question or negative comments. Common examples of auxiliary verbs include have, might, will. So like um, the previous linking verb, we also have the auxiliary verb is parang hindi siya yung eksaktong ginawa or kinilos ng isang tao or bagay. Para silang connecting, connecting verbs. These auxiliary verbs give some context to the main verb. For example, letting the reader know when the action took place. So some examples of auxiliary verbs are would, should, do, can, did, could, and may. Okay, so here is an example. I will go home after football practice. So the auxiliary verb here is will because will is telling us that the action of the main verb go is going to take place in the future after football practice has ended. But then if the auxiliary verb will was removed, we get the sentence, I go home after football practice. In this case, there is no definite time frame for the action. The sentence suggests that going home after football practice is just something that the subject I is generally doing. So, ibig sabihin na ang auxiliary verb, siya yung nagbibigay ng panahon doon or parang kahit hindi naman siya specific time pero naglalaan siya ng time which is specifically about the future para i-relate doon sa verb. Kasi kung walang auxiliary verb, maaaring in general. Generally na ginagawa, hindi na specific. Next, we have here another or more examples. First is, we can use the auxiliary verb before the pronoun to make it a question. Example, might you dance with me later? Did we consider Brian's feelings? Has Jenny spoken her final words? Also, auxiliary verbs are used to help form negative statements. This will usually split the auxiliary and main verbs. It says here, I may never dance with you again. We did not consider Brian's feelings. Jenny has not spoken her final words. So parang ang auxiliary verb, ay mga conjunctions na nag-uugnay at nagbibigay ng meaning sa isang kilos o isang gawa. Okay, next type of verb is we have the stative verb. So what is a stative verb? Stative verbs can be recognized because they express a state rather than an action. They typically relate to thoughts, emotions, relationships, senses, states of being, and measurements. The best way to think about stative verbs is that they are verbs that describe things that are not actions. Okay, the stative verbs are all expressing a state, a state of doubting, a state of believing, a state of wanting. These states of being are often temporary. So to give you more um, explanation or more emphasis on what are stative verbs its examples. We have here, the doctor disagrees with your analysis. Disagree is a stative verb here as it describes the doctor's state of being. Disagreement. So we should not be confused with having nouns and those non-action verbs. Another one, John doubts the doctor's opinion. I believe the doctor is right. She wanted another opinion. So always remember na ang noun ay ang pangalan ng isang tao, bagay, hayop, o lugar. But then, ang, ang verb ay yung gawa o kilos o nararamdaman 
ng isang tao o ng isang bag. Okay, next, we have modal verbs. From the word itself, modal verbs or mode, what could this be? Okay, so modal verbs are auxiliary verbs, meaning they are also helping verbs that are used to express abilities, possibilities, permissions, and obligations. Modal verb examples are can, must, may, should, and would. So an example is he can shoot a three-point shot easily. The auxiliary verb can is expressing an ability suggesting that shooting a three-point shot is a skill the subject possesses. Ibig sabihin ang modal verbs ay ang isang ginagawa ng isang tao na meron siya. Meaning, skill siya or ability or... Okay, next. So, it says here that please note that in case of should and must in the examples below, the modal verbs are expressing obligations, whereas would and may are expressing possibilities. Should and must. Uh, naririnig natin ito palagi. You should be in uniform. You must be in time. Meaning, obliged ka na gawin ang isang bagay na iyon. Would and may are expressing possibilities. Like, would you accompany me to the to some to somewhere else or may you be my may you be my partner in prom so it means that you are asking and is expressing that that person could respond to you positively or even negatively example i should go home meaning o oh, dapat ka nang umuwi you must not delay meaning hindi ka dap hindi mo dapat patagalin pa sally would not recommend the sushi meaning would is parang nagbibigay ka pa rin ng period o ng oblig eh, hindi naman siya obligation parang um definite definite meaning to it then david may be late ibig sabihin may possibility na may david okay so here is a chart which summarizes the main types of verbs so alam ko marami nang ating na discuss there are seven types of verbs so here is a summary for it all we have here Transitive verb is an action verb which takes an object. Reggie rides the bus every day. So the bus is the object and ride meaning direct siya doon sa bus. Siya yung sin uh, sasakay ka sa bus. Ibig sabihin that's a transitive verb. Intransitive verb is an action verb that does not take an object. He danced gracefully meaning ikaw lang. Walang nagre-receive. Transitive verb ay may nagre-receive ng action. Intransitive verb ay wala. Linking verb, a verb that aids another verb to form its tense or mood. Example, Marie was absent in the class yesterday. Ibig sabihin, yung linking verb ay yung nagli-link or nagko-connect ng subject sa verb. It could be is, was, are, were, being. So another one. We have here auxiliary verb. So what is an auxiliary verb? It is a helping verb that aids another verb to form its tense or mood. Ibig sabihin dito, Marvin called the meeting. They need to work harder. Ibig sabihin, ang main verb dito ay called. Meaning ipinatawag or, or tumatawag ng meeting. And then the auxiliary verb or the helping verb which nagbibigay ng emphasis doon sa verb na sa main verb na ginamit is they need to work harder. Next is we have stative verb. So it is a verb that expresses a state rather than an action. So Lynn looks beautiful in her dress. Ibig sabihin kung ano yung status ng isang tao para sa iyo o ng isang bagay para sa iyo. Next, modal verb. So an auxiliary verb Modal verb is still a, is a part of an auxiliary verb, which is a helping verb that expresses abilities, possibilities, permissions, and obligations. Example is, she will play the guitar tonight. So, ibig sabihin, e, pinupunto dito na siya or ang babae ay siguradong mag, uh, magtutunog or magpiplay ng gitara ngayong 
All right. So here ends the first part of our um, topic about the verbs. We discussed about the different types of verbs. So always remember, reviewers, the transitive verbs are those that has receivers or my subject na nag -re receive ng kilos. We also have the intransitive verb which does not have a receiver. The linking verb who connects the subject and its verb. Examples are is, are, was, and were. We also have the auxiliary verb which is a helping verb to the main verb. We also have the stative verb or the status meaning ibinibigay niya O inilalarawan niya ang estado ng isang kilos o ng isang gawa and the modal verb which expresses obligation or possibilities. So we still have more topics to discuss about this part of speech which is the verb. So stay tuned to our next video for you to be able to know more about the topic verb.